So I guess I'm going to build the best well-rounded test bay blade. <laughs> So we will be uh, testing through all the different parts that will help me make the perfect bay blade for testing purposes. So we'll be going through different types of parts, different types of, of uh, launchers, and we'll slowly learn a little bit of bay blades together. This is very informative. This will be very informative, I hope. Okay, so starting off, so first we have the top layer, which is the energy layer. The second part in the middle is the forge disc. And the bottom part is the performance tip. All three pieces and just lock with each other. Like so. That is your bay blade. These are the three main components to building a basic bay blade. We will be breaking down the concept and the understanding of each individual part and their changes in the generation. And, all right. Okay, so starting with the energy layer. Uh, the first series was called, uh, uh, known as the single layer series, which I do not own any. There's only a few of them out, but I do have a double layer, which is the next series, which are a slight beefier piece made out of double layers of plastic, as you can see with the red and blue. This is an Excalius for from Hasbro, as you can tell Hasbro Energy Layers put a QR code to allow you to scan them on their apps and they also contain slopes instead of teeth. As you can see in Japanese Beyblades, they use uh, a teeth, a little cog-like teeth system for a ratchet system, that's what I would say. Each are different. Uh, no one is better than the other. Um, the Hasbro ones have slopes to prevent further breakage. This is a god layer, energy layer. You can tell as it has a chip in the middle. So the thing about the god layer system is it has these little chips in the middle which add a weight and changes the balance of the disc. Also, it's when they start incorporating slight gimmicks to them like this. This Valkyrie has a spring. And that is... the god layer system. We won't be using this one. The next part after the god series is the Chozy series. The Chozy series contains an interesting gimmick onto it as this Buster Excalius has a sword that, which you can unlock and it, it protrudes a little bit. Also, they contain metal pieces in them. The thing about the uh, the thing about the Cho Z series is that they require a level chip to make them perfectly complete which were given at events only for winners or you can and receive them in magazines as a promotional item. Certain Beyblades and sets do contain a level chip. Now the final series which is the one we will be looking into is the GT series. This is the most customizable series and is the most current version. 
as of recording this video. The GT series contains a three parts in the layer. It has the GT chip, which contains the teeth of the Beyblade, the energy weight, or the layer weight, which adds a weight to the Beyblade, aids topper energy component, and then the energy disc, which gives contact when battling. When combined, naming would go accordingly. Dread, Fafnir, Gravity, Orbit, Retsu. And that's the naming process of a Beyblade. However, you can name it whatever you want. Let's call this one Benjamin. Now we will go and look through weights. Next we will be looking at forge discs. That is the middle layer which creates the weight of the Beyblade. There are multiple variants of a forge disc and any and is all interchangeable with one another. This is a magnum. You can tell as it indicated with an M. Each forged disc is indicated with a letter or a number system. The nice thing about Beyblade forged discs are they are all interchangeable with one another without changing the designs too much or at all. Later versions are altered, but we'll go into that later. number discs. These are the core discs in Beyblades. They are very versatile and different. They are indicated with a number on them. This is a number four. The nice thing about the core discs are they have a lovely rigid under them which allows you to add a, a weight frame on them. So they're all interchangeable with one another. Dash. This is a, a one dash weight disc. It is still within the core system. However, the one has a marking on top indicating that it is a part of the dash series. It's, it means that it is an upgraded version of the original one. You do not own an original one disc. However, the Dash version has a slightly higher performance. These two can use frames. Gimmick discs. These are interesting Beyblade discs that uh, weight discs. These are interesting forge discs which contain gimmicks. As you can see in the zenith, it has a large protruding rubber which is meant for attack. This is the paradox weight. It is used with in conjunction with the naked energy layer by flipping over and, cr and adding alternate forms. This is not compatible with any other Beyblade energy layer in this form. There are also weight layers with moving parts. However, in future releases in the Hasbro line, they remove those, those gimmicks, making them only metal 
forge this. This is a Hasbro Ratchet disc. The Japanese Takara Tommy versions have a free spinning wheel in the middle. However, on based on the design of these Hasbro versions, it no longer has it and instead is compatible with using a frame. Next we will be looking at performance tips. These make up the, po the point where the Beyblade spins on. Each performance tip has a different point of contact allowing for variant attack types. As you can see this one is, has a gimmick which allows you to rotate adjusting both the height and allowing a small tip to protrude for making it either more aggressive or more defensive. You can tell a more aggressive Beyblade tip by how flat the surface is. A flatter surface this will make it more in contact with the stadium and allows it to travel more aggressively. Stamina based have free spinning points which allow the Beyblade to continue spinning even if the point stops moving. There are also larger performance tips. These have a forge disc integrated into them. This one, when moved at a higher velocity, it will retract the tip, making it more aggressive. However, when slowing down, it'll pull it out, making, allowing it to be more defensive in its movements. Due to having a built-in forge disc, it is not compatible with having any other forge discs but its own. Like the forge disc, these two have a dash series. This is indicated with a red top. As you can see, the red indicates it is a dash series, which means it has a stronger spring in it for more burst resistance. The Hasbro Energy Layer is not compatible with the Takaratami performance tip. However, due to the design of the Hasbro tips, they are compatible with the Tommy layers. However, due to the lighter spring used in Hasbro, they do have a higher chance of burst. Next, we will go over a right spin bay blade and a left spin bay blade. The right spin Beyblade, it is compatible with, with all right spinning launchers, as indicated. <coughs> However, left spin Beyblades are not compatible with right spinning launchers. For this, you will need specialty launchers meant for left spinning. This one is a string launcher which uses both left and right spin directions. For a constant launch, I will be using the Hasbro 
precision launcher. For our first setup, I will be looking at using the Bushin Lair. It is a very symmetrical, equally diverse lair. It is a defensive base, which means it will have a consistent balance around all points. Weight-wise, I will be looking to use the Sen weight, as it equally distributes the weight in all directions. For the GT chip, I will be using the Joker chip as it is balanced in design in both top and bottom. For the forge disc, I will be looking at the down forge disc. It is the most symmetrical disc I own. For the performance tip, I will be looking at the around. It, is, it has both free spinning as well as a tip in the middle. This will be the starting point of my testing with different parts. However, we will go through looking at other symmetrical and free spinning parts to see if this was the best choice.